What did they find? Increases brown fat thermogenesis, thereby metabolism, thereby comfort being, you know, in cold, etc. Clearly there's a resilience effect. Clearly there's a dopamine increasing effect. The increase in epinephrine and dopamine is two to 300%. These are huge increases and they last many hours. All the studies I just referred to are all done in humans, men and women, fairly broad age ranges. So you want to be uncomfortable in the cold. This is the beautiful work of a woman named Susanna Soberg, who's um, Scandinavia, and she published this paper last year in Cell Reports Medicine. And so I call this the Soberg principle, which is if you're doing ice and heat for whatever reason, it doesn't matter if you end on heat or cold, but if you're using cold specifically to stimulate an increase in metabolism, end with cold. That's the Soberg principle. We finally have some good science to put to this, showing that the threshold you're trying to hit each week is at least, you can do more, but at least 11 minutes of uncomfortable but safe cold exposure per week total. So that could be three minutes Monday, three minutes Wednesday, so, so on, to 11 minutes. And I try and do the cold exposure shower or immersion, but early in the day, because it really wakes you up. But let's say you want to reduce post-exercise inflammation. You're not concerned with hypertrophy gains, of, of muscle size gains or strength gains. Well, then get in the cold after your, your workout do that for one to, some people can do 10 minutes, reduce inflammation. People always ask how cold to make the ice bath or the cold water or the shower. You want it to be uncomfortably cold, meaning you want to feel like I really want to get out, but you can safely stay in. And that's going to vary by person and experience. I sometimes enjoy seeing these social media posts where people get into the ice bath and they'll look really stoic, like they're really tough. But actually that's the wimpy way to go through it. When you get into cold water, if you stay very still, you develop a thermal sheath around you that you're warming yourself. The, the really bold way is to get in and continue to sift your arms and legs and it ends up feeling miserably colder. And then when you get out, you'll notice a lot of people huddle or they'll, they'll put, or they'll grab the towel. In general, that's me, I'll get back, I'll get into the sauna. If you really wanna stimulate the big increases in metabolism, you stand out there and you dry off with arms extended in open air. And as that water evaporates off you, it is really cold, but your body is forced to activate a number of the warming programs related to metabolism.